Juxtaposition. The act or instance of placing two or more objects side by side to make a comparison. Contrast them. This word is one of my favorite words because it describes the way I view life, how I see life, how I experience it. And we'll get into that. My name is Siri. I am 24. And this is a picture of me when I was around four. And I thought it was cute, so I included it. <laughs> I have ADHD, which is the combination of ADHD and autism. Now, what is ADHD? ADHD has three subtypes within the DSM. There's the inattentive type, so that is you're not really paying attention, but they're still listening. They just kind of look off to the side. We have your hyperactive, so the kid that's running around doing everything all the time and causing a little bit of a ruckus. And the combined type, which is both somehow the quiet kid and running around all the time. And that is what I have for ADHD. For autism, there's a little bit different criteria. So there's social emotional reciprocity differences. So that's things like eye contact, things like understanding back and forth conversation. Um, there's differences in nonverbal communication. So again, eye contact and understanding gestures, when to use them, what they mean in other people. Uh, difficulty understanding, maintaining, and developing relationships. If it's hard to have a conversation with someone, it is very hard to start a relationship. So that is one. And our last one is repetitive and rigid patterns of behavior. So that's your black and white thinking, you only want to play with that one toy all the time and not move to any other thing. And very restrictive uh, interests as well sometimes. So, those can be kind of wild to be existing together. And that is who I am as a person. <laughs> I am everything and nothing, all at the same time. So, I actually received both of these diagnoses as an adult, which is wild considering some of the people who've known me my whole life. Um, because a lot of those traits were very evident in my life. People just didn't know it was related to those two diagnoses. But why would I even want a diagnosis as a, an adult? Well, there, um, or before we get there, there are a couple uh, issues with getting an, a, a diagnosis as an adult. So 27 to 7, 2.7 to 7.3 percent of Canadian adults have ADHD. So that's a pretty high number. If you relate that to Edmonton's population, it's 29 to 80,000 adults with ADHD, which is a pretty large number. Um, and in Canada in general, we have 1.1 to 2% of Canadians of all ages have autism. And within the Edmonton area, that would be 11 to 22,000 people with autism. So there are a lot of people with both of those conditions. Um, and the co-occurrence of both those conditions is quite high. Uh, 50 to 70% of autistic people also have ADHD. So it's super common. Um, and one big issue with getting diagnosed is our wait times in Canada. So according to the Fraser Institute, 10.8 10 to 37.4 weeks um, you have to wait to even see a psychologist, not even get the diagnosis, just to see them to potentially get diagnosed. And it depends on your province, how long that wait time is. And if you go private and don't want to wait that long, it costs around 2000 for each diagnosis. So 4000 in total if you have both conditions. So that's a quite steep barrier for a lot of people to overcome. I fortunately have had um, the use of my student loans to help me with that diagnosis um, because the wait times do um, take a lot of time. But yeah, so why diagnosis? In the pandemic, I was burnt out. Uh, I was burnt out probably before the pandemic, but the pande pandemic made all my friends go online and I never got to see them. So I was really forced to think deeply about who I was as a person. 
and really what I wanted to do. And I found myself in a very low mental health state uh, and like just dark in general. Um, my friend who once the, the lockdown lifted, I hung out with them. And my friend, we were hanging out one time, there was just a one-off comment. My friend loves to just ask me questions about things. Um, he said, Siri, uh, I've seen you've been kind of upset lately. Uh, have you considered therapy? Now he said it in like a nice way, because we're still friends. But um, that was like the one push I needed to go see someone. Um, my first therapist happened to be, um, happened to, my first therapist happened to work with autistic youth in her undergrad. So she brought the idea of autism up to me and I said, potentially, you know, my TikTok says that that could be a thing. So let's look at this. We did a couple screening tests and it was quite indicative. So I pursued that full diagnosis. Um, with the ADHD, my sister has ADHD and during the pandemic, we got a little bit closer and I said, maybe we're not as different as I thought we were. So I also pursued that one. Now, post-diagnosis, there's a few emotions that come out. We have relief because when you grow up not knowing that you have autism or ADHD, there's a lot of things that are kind of weird about you, but not weird enough for people to notice sometimes. So you're like, I'm kind of strange um, and I don't know why. So like, why is this happening? Um, so knowing that there is a thing that is causing that is a big relief. Um, there's also a little bit of anger because it took me 24 years to figure that out. So I feel like I could have gotten in different places, done different things had I had known that these were occurring. There's a little bit of shame because maybe if I knew about these things, I could handle situations a little bit better. Um, yeah, and just uh, lost time that I had. And it was jarring because when I got the, these diagnoses, I was so excited to have them. And I would tell a lot of people, I was like, I am autistic, fun fact. Um, and a lot of people would be like, that is wild. Um, because it is kind of a taboo t subject when you bring it up because people don't know how to react to that. They're like, I've never met someone autistic that is like you or I don't look autistic. So it's quite drawing to the public and me because they are not reacting in the way that I thought they were because I am so excited and they are very confused, you know? Um, but after you accept your diagnosis, these, those emotions still every so often come up for me, but they've leveled out at this point. I now, having known that I have these diagnoses, I have improved functioning. I can now tell people what I need. Um, and also if those things end up not working, I know what works for other people and I can try that out because they also have autism or they also have ADHD or both. And we can all, I have a little community that we kind of go back and forth with those. Um, I'm more gentle with myself, so the things that are wrong about me are not necessarily wrong. I'm just a different person. So what works for you might not work for me. And I, that's not because I'm broken, it's because I'm simply different. Um, and with that, there's a lot of more self-assurance. So when things go wrong, it's like, cool, Siri, we're going to keep going. And we're going to learn from it. We're not going to let that take me down. And I feel less like a burden. My friends love to poke fun at this. I will ask them all the time. We're like, we are still friends, right? You haven't said that you were my friend recently. I just need you to say yes. So they know that those questions will come up and they know that it's not me questioning their character. It's me needing a little bit more assurance from them that I can't give myself all the time. Now, accommodating myself in everyday life, um, there's a lot of compromising I have to do. My ADHD makes me want to do everything all at once and I want to run around and be all active and everything. My autism wants to sit down and read a book for four hours. It's a very wild time in my brain. So compromising being like, okay, we can run for an hour 
and then we're going to sit down and just watch a little show. And then that will make my brain happy for that day. Uh, I use a lot of grounding techniques. Uh, I do a lot of breathing techniques, uh, body scans, just to make sure I stay grounded because I can get all in my head and not and forget that like life exists. I'm not. It's not all in my head. Um, finding support in many ways. So my friends are super supportive for me. Um, they they know when I say certain things that I need certain reassurance or maybe I just need to hang out with them for like an hour maybe I need to call them they like they support me in that way um, I also have my um, medical team so like my therapists I, I consider my massage therapist and my chiropractors part of that too because I like to tell them about my life and also helps me ground at the same time um, and boundaries. This is something I'm still working on, but having boundaries between like my professional friends versus my personal friends and everything within my life. Uh, as soon as one thing starts leaking into the other thing, that's when anxiety gets really high and then that's when the compromising falls short and everything kind of falls apart. So having boundaries and knowing when to stay in what lane is super helpful for me and I'm, again, still continually working at this. And you have to understand your strengths. So because of my ADHD, I am super good at finding um, social media trends for my work. So I've been, become the person that people go to for creativity. And I think that's so cool because I never figured out that that was a strength until I did something. And they were like, that was really cool. And I said, that is just what I think of on the daily. So I guess it's kind of good. Um, but yeah, using your, what you may struggle with to kind of get you into that strength mindset is what you need. And everyone is unique. As I said before, what works for me in this very moment might not work tomorrow. It has changed that fast before. And also what works for me might not work for my sister, might work for my friend, for my mom, uh, everything. Everyone is so unique. So you have to kind of find your own group and finding what works for you is key. And again, that will change throughout time. And I want to leave you with the quote that I made up myself. Um, <laughs> uh, what makes you misfit can make you into a miracle if you put your mind in that right mindset. I've been Siri, and thank you so much.